Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over some of the move, scale, as well as rotate commands for Rhino 6. We want to use these all the time to manipulate our objects in order to place them where we want them. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these extra things from the last video. We're just going to keep the nice solid that we have. And we're going to go over the move first. So basically, move is very self-explanatory. It moves the object from one point to another. So let's say if I want to move this to the right, all we have to do is type in move the command up top. It'll tell, it'll ask us for object to move. We're going to select the object that we want to move, hit enter or spacebar. It's going to ask for a point to move from. We're going to move from this point and we're just going to move it over here. And you can basically move these anywhere that you want with the move command. If you have snap on, it'll snap to things even if they're not physically there. So this is like a ghost of what the object is and it'll snap to every single one of these points here. So that's basically a move. If you wanna rotate this object, again, I like to type things in. So I'm gonna type rotate. It's gonna ask us again for the object to rotate. We're gonna hit this object, hit enter, or I like to use space. It's gonna ask for a center of rotation. We're just gonna have one of these points here and there we go. We can rotate this object uh, however degrees we want. If we want a precise degree here, we can type in 30 degrees and it will rotate the object 30 degrees. And I forgot to mention this for transform, but this will actually also work for transform. I'm going to control Z, which is undo. So just demonstrate if we type in move, select object, uh, press enter, and then we're going to select the point. If we just want to move this over on this side, we're going to hover on the right here. If we want to move this over 30 units, we can type in 30 and it'll move it over precisely by 30 units. Okay. And the next one we're going to go over is a scale. Now there are many different types of scales in Rhino. We're going to go over some of the most basic ones. So if we type in scale here, it's again going to ask us for object to scale. We're going to select our object here, press enter or space. It's going to ask for a base point. We can also copy this if we want to, but we're not going to do that. So we're just going to hit the bottom corner of this like we always do. Now it's going to ask for a scale factor. If we want this two times, we can type in two here. If we want this five times, we can type in five here. Uh, I'm going to type in two. As you can see, it's going to scale the entire object by a factor of two. I'm going to control Z real quick and let's see if we, what happens if we do some of the other options. I'm going to type in scale one more time, select the object, press enter, and we're going to use the same point. Now if I want this to be the first point of the scale and just the middle of this to be the second point, you can see that it'll use the middle point, these two points, for how much this actually scales. If I select these two points, it'll use the ends. If I select this to this, it'll use that side. And if I say select the middle to the middle here, it'll use the middle. So that comes in handy if you want to maybe align just this uh, height to another height. You can scale the entire object. But yeah, you can do that. Uh, with the if you select two different points with the scale tool. Now another thing we can do is if we type in scale 1D, if we just want to increase the height of this object, we can type in scale 1D. So what that basically mean, means is it'll scale in only one dimension. This is the object that we want to scale, so we're going to select it. Say we just want to scale in the Z direction, so up and down in height. We're going to select the two points and say we want to fill a gap here, we just want to stretch this out. We can make this however long we want. So for example, if we want this to be exactly 5 or 50 units, we can have 50 here. And this height right now is exactly at 50 units. And my unit right now is millimeters, so it is 50 millimeters. Uh, similarly, if we want to do a two-dimensional scale, we can type in scale 2D and basically the same thing, but it'll only scale in the X and the Y axes like this. 
So if we scale 2D, it'll scale both X and Y. Okay, now with all of these scale options, we have the option to copy these. So if I just do a scale 1D really quickly and I check this copy to yes, so you can either type in C as the underlined letter there, because it tells you which one, which, which letter you need to type in in order to change the selection here. So I'm gonna type in C, or you can just simply click the copy, and it turns to yes. Now we're gonna repeat our steps. I just wanna make this a little bit taller. Let's do 100 units this time. And as you can see, it made a copy with our new option. We still kept the old one, but we have a new one. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the new one uh, with the delete key, but that'll come in handy if we want to basically make a copy of what we have, but in a different size. Um, uh, another smart thing to do, or something that'll make life way easier, is the gumball tool. If you guys don't see this weird looking arrow thing, it is on the bottom here. You guys have to check this on. So this is the gumball tool and it basically does what we just covered, but like way easier. So these arrows means move. So X, Y move are these green and red arrows like this. All you have to do is drag them. And then Z direction move is the blue arrow. If we want to just move these in space. This is the, uh, this means like the red and the blue combined here means it'll move in the X and the Z direction. So you can move it like this. Similarly, if we move over here, the square will change into green and blue. We can move it like that. And if we go down here, it'll change into green and red. That means it won't move in height, just in X, Y. Okay, so with another thing with the gumball is rotate. So these things on the bottom are our rotate options. You can see here, it'll rotate however much you want it to in each of the axes here, like that. You can play around with these. But if we want a specific value, say we wanna rotate the red axis uh, here by a value of 30 degrees, then we can simply just left click, type in 30, and it will rotate by a value of 30 degrees. Same thing with the move, actually, if you just click and then type in 50, it'll move it by 50. Now with the scale, it's these squares with the dotted lines. If we want to scale this in this direction, we can drag this like that. Now this is different from scale 1D because it'll scale both of them and it'll scale from either sides. So there's a center, which is here. And what this will do is it'll scale from the center, which is different from our scale option, but nevertheless, really, really useful. Uh, you can see, you can do all three of these, the blue ones down here to manipulate our object. And the same thing applies if you just left click once we can type in a scale factor. So if I want this 1.5 times, we can do that. And now it is 1.5 times larger. If I want this smaller, we can type in 0.5, so we'll half it. And now it is half as big as it used to be. I do use the gumball a lot more than the move, but they're definitely both useful. And yeah, 